Okay, so let me uh, introduce Ibu Gingin. So Ibu Gingin Gustin, PhD. Uh, she's one of my uh, lecturer now uh, in UP. So uh, I'm taking a literature, uh, sorry, literacy class with her. And then now I'd like to invite her in our class to talk about critical literacy because I believe this is very important, one of the important topic in literacy. And then since you are uh, now in uh, English language education, uh, and then you're gonna be um, English language teacher. So I think it's, it's very important for all of us, not only you, for all of us to learn about critical literacy. Yeah. Uh, Ibu Gingin uh, has a um, bachelor and master's degree from Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. And then she has a um, PhD from Language and Literacy Education, uh, Deakin uh, University, Australia. So I think that's that's very uh, you know um, important for us to have this session with her. So without further ado, Ibu, uh, the time and uh, screen is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Ibu Susi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. How are you today? I hope good you are all. Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, where Where do you uh, Where do you uh, Where are you now? Where do you live now? Are you all in somewhere near Jakarta, or you go back home somewhere? Go back home. Back is home. Far from Jakarta. So may I know where you are now? Just, just random, so I could know where you are at the moment. I'm in South Sulawesi, Miss. Okay. I'm from okay. Bali. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Yeah. So all over uh, Indonesia. Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank you very much, uh, especially to Ibu Susi, who has kindly invited you to invited me to participate in her class uh, and I'm very honored to be here. Uh, I'm currently residing in Bandung and it's cloudy now where I live. Uh, I hope it's not very cloudy where you are now and if it's raining, the connection sometimes is not uh, very good yeah I think it happens to all of us so let's just hope it's not gonna rain that that hard today okay uh, um, I, I, I guess I'm uh, currently teaching at uh, English department Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia that is also in Bandung and I live not not very far from my office is maybe about uh, less than two kilometers from my office but sometimes before the pandemic if it's if it's busy hour it could uh, sometimes it could take me about 30 minutes yeah On, although it's only you know less than uh, or less than uh, actually less than five yeah i think three three and a half yeah not not that far actually but now i spend most of the time at home yeah okay all right so um okay so there are about 25 students in this classroom Okay. Yeah. Um, Some of yeah, the students yeah. are from uh, other classes. Who? Uh, they're taking. Uh, what class are you, uh, Felix? Um, literacy, culture and development of critical readers. Yeah. Mm, uh, what do you mean, other class? Is that a, a subject in English department or what, Bususi? Yes. So this session. Uh, is particularly for micro teaching and TEFL2 uh, students. But then I'm inviting, like I mentioned to you, I'm inviting other students. And then there is uh, some students who are taking uh, the, the literacy class. Uh, say it again, Felix. Sorry, sorry I think I missed uh, the course name. Um. Literacy, culture, and the development of critical readers. Oh, okay. That's, that sounds very good. Yeah. And, and what semester are you now? Fifth. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I think we can start now. Let me share screen. Okay. Just a moment. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. 
All right. So the title, um, oh, hang on. I have just, just wait a moment. Um, oh, it's okay. Right. I hope it's not too small for you. I think I have downloaded this, but uh, the, the, the screen is, is it too small for you? No, no yes. Okay. No, okay. No, All right. yeah. okay. All right. Thank you very much. Now, the title of my presentation today is Embedding Critical Literacy in Everyday Life. Okay. Uh, and you can see I have uh, put many icons here. Okay. Many, many icons in my first slide. Uh, you can see there are a lot of uh, apps that you might be having in your mobile application at the moment. Yeah. Because what I really want to uh, talk about today is really related to our everyday life. Yeah, everyday life. So uh, why it is important and how we are going to do that in our daily life. So that's why I'm uh, using all these uh, uh, popular icon, yeah, famous icon that I'm, I'm sure you are all using this. Okay, all right. Now let's have a look at the second slide. It's called literacy and critical literacy. Okay, first of all, um, I think we can have a look at the more traditional or conventional definition of what it means by literacy. Okay, uh, if you look at uh, mainstream websites such as UNESCO, okay, when we talk about literacy, or if you look at uh, sustainable development goals, are you familiar with that? Sustainable development goals. Uh, yes, yeah, so actually it is, uh, it, is uh, it consists of some goals uh, established by the United Nations. And one of the goals is to uh, reach uh, quality education. So sustainable development goals number four. Okay, so if you look at those official uh, information or official websites, you might come across to the very beginning or the very basic of uh, traditional definition of literacy, okay? Oh, I forget to say, Bususi, I think it is better for us to have this uh, talk to be more interactive. So yes. if in the middle of my discussion, mm -hmm. uh, you want to ask question, feel free to interrupt, okay? Feel okay, free to, uh, but I can't see your uh, everybody's screen now. So if you raise okay. your hand, I might not be able to see you. Okay. okay but I'm sure Bususi will help. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, yeah, feel free to interrupt me anytime. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. So if you look at those official uh, information uh, or, or the history of literacy from uh, the beginning, you might come across to a more traditional definition of literacy, which is uh, sometimes called alphabetical literacy. Yeah, alphabetical literacy, as the name uh, indicates, it is the teaching of reading and writing only and from conventional perspective. So if you look at uh, sustainable development goals, uh, the, the quality education, one of the goals is to eradicate illiteracy rates, for example. Yeah. By the way, do you know the statistic of illiterate people in Indonesia? Have you checked? Okay, it's very important, yeah? Because when we talk about literacy, we need to talk about the history, we need to talk about the basic concept before we jump to uh, another approach of literacy. Okay, so uh, the Sustainable Development Goals talks about, uh, sorry? Oh, okay. Uh, sustainable Development Goals talk about uh, uh, how to eradicate illiteracy rate uh, all over the world, yeah, including in Indonesia. So that's a little bit of uh, traditional definition is the ability for us to read and write. Okay, that's from a conventional perspective. But now, as we move towards, um, you know, 21st centuries, as we are now living in highly mediated digital technologies, and we also, you know, consume or even produce information in our daily life. Uh, some experts in education, some experts in social studies believe that the conventional literacy, conventional literacy is not sufficient. 
So we need to improve something. We need to add something. Yeah. When we talk about critical literacy, uh, one thing for you to remember that the conventional literacy uh, has uh, played a significant role. Yeah. It has paved a way to go to critical literacy. So uh, we are not going to say that alphabetical literacy or the ability uh, to read and write is not important. No, we are not saying that. It is very important and it will always be an important aspect in everybody's life. But when we talk about critical literacy, we will add more elements to that. Yeah, we will add more elements to reading and writing. Okay, so critical literacy, uh, there are many definitions of critical literacy. Um, it's basically reading and writing with a more critical perspective. Yeah, but uh, at the at the end uh, at the end uh, spectrum of critical literacy, you need to know that the goal of critical literacy is to identify the following things. Okay, it's to identify injustice, imbalance, point of view, inequality which are not only found in the text, but in real life. So if you look at the conventional lit uh, definition of literacy and critical literacy, in which you add a, 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 a critical element to the way we read and write, we also need to add uh, uh, these goals, okay? Uh, this is very important for me to put this in the beginning, yeah? in, the, in, in the first slide on the goal of critical literacy, uh, because you might uh, wonder uh, if critical literacy is reading and writing with critical perspective, then you might have heard, like uh, Felix said, I think uh, Felix mentioned that you enroll in critical reading. Yeah, is it correct? Yes, miss. Yeah, okay, so that's a, a very interesting uh, course, yeah, very interesting subject. So you might want to know uh, what's the differences then between critical literacy or critical reading or maybe critical thinking. Have you heard critical thinking? What kind of ability is that? What is critical thinking? Anyone, please? Uh, unmute your mic. I want to know what uh, you have heard or what you know about uh, critical thinking or critical reading or, or critical writing. Please, would you like to share your thoughts? Um, yes, miss. Uh, yes. For me, critical thinking is the analysis of facts or data to form a judgment, miss. So uh, when we applying like analysis uh, of something that we read or see. So that's mean that we applying critical thinking. Okay, very good. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, hello, Miss. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so from uh, what I learned before, critical thinking is our ability to um, be critical about information or about our daily life. So we don't. Um, what we hear, we think about it first. We don't um, go langsung di uh, terima. We don't. Um, yeah. So you suspend, people. suspend your judgment. Okay, you don't judge quickly. All right, but you do reflective. That's what reflective thinking means. Okay, all right, very good. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Okay, so the reason why I use uh, I I display the goal of critical literacy in the beginning is for you to remember. Uh, not only remember actually, for you to uh, uh, think that the goal of critical literacy is much more than just being critical. Okay, it is, it is, it might be a little bit overlapping with critical reading or critical writing or critical thinking. But one thing in one thing to bear in your mind, uh, the goal of critical literacy is uh, many experts always mention the words injustice, imbalance point of view, inequality. Yeah, and the most important thing is we are dealing not only those issues in the text, but uh, uh, issues in real life. Just a little bit of history uh, with critical literacy. Actually, critical literacy, uh, the birth of critical literacy is just like many other knowledge and science. Yeah, It is derived from uh, countries where English is spoken as first language. Yeah, For example, it, uh, it was uh, 
it was initiated by uh, many experts in Australia, in America, uh, also some in Canada. Okay, but if we are dealing with injustice, you know, if we are uh, revealing, yeah, revealing the injustice in in our life, if we are able to come to a point where we can see. Uh, imbalance point of view or inequality sometimes it doesn't look good to some people yeah it doesn't look good for the authority for example okay so that's why uh, critical literacy must be uh, treated with uh, uh, must be carefully treated yeah it must be very sensitive to the context it means when we are talking about critical literacy in indonesia it might not be the same as critical literacy in Australia. And we, we, are, we are working on different uh, system. We are working on different beliefs. We are working on different values, but the roots are the same. Yeah, so it must be uh, taken care uh, very, very, uh, uh, very carefully. We need to take care of those issues very carefully. Okay, and we need to consider the context where we are living. Okay, so what is critical literacy? Yeah, critical literacy doesn't have a set of fixed definition. Okay, so it's 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 uh, always an ongoing uh, process of uh, defining. My, many people try to define it the best that they could, and it doesn't have a set of definition up to now because if you look at some articles published uh, 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 this year or last year or five years ago, they might be uh, some differences found or some similarities okay so it doesn't have a set of, of definition but one thing for sure critical literacy should be viewed as a way of thinking so after you after my talk is finished or after you finish your course with ibu susi on literacy uh, we don't want you to we don't want you to uh, uh, you know to stop uh, having some critical thoughts we don't want you to become non-critical yeah not only after you finish uh, 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 in this session not only after you finish your course with ibu susi but critical literacy is a way of thinking it means critical literacy should be there with you okay as a lifelong learning okay so uh, yeah, so uh, later on after you graduate, uh, it's, it would be sad for us if we look at students who are uh, not uh, having some critical perspective, yeah? Because critical literacy is not only in academic life, is not only found in the text, but it should be there with you uh, as a lifelong learning, yeah? And critical literacy is, is a way of life, okay? A way of thinking, a way of life, rather than a topic to be covered. Okay, so uh, in the countries where literacy was uh, coined, was originated uh, up to now, critical literacy can be found in many courses, in many subjects, not only in social studies, not only in English, but in math in nursing, in politics, in uh, science, uh, yeah, in, in many aspects, because uh, as I said earlier, it is a way of thinking, a way of life, okay. All right, uh, another aspect of critical literacy is a need to have a critical perspective or critical orientation to text and practices. When we mention text, we will have a look later what we mean by text under critical literacy perspective. Okay, and critical literacy also involves questioning, examining of ideas, and requires you to synthesize, analyze, interpret, evaluate, and respond to the text you read or you, uh, text you listen to. Yeah, so these all these are some important elements of critical literacy: questioning, yeah, examining idea, uh, synthesizing. Uh, can anyone tell me what synthesize mean, please? Can you unmute your mic? What does synthesize means? Come on. Um, may I try, Miss? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm sorry that if I I wrong, Miss. Uh, based no, on don't worry. what I have uh, read, 
synthesizing 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 mean that when we have like two definitions from two uh, resources or from two authors and then we synthesis those two definitions with our understanding miss hmm, yes yeah, very good yeah uh, thank you for sharing yeah that's uh yes that's a working definition of synthesizing anyone else please um miss my try yes yeah. of course go ahead uh, I think synthesizing is combining two uh, two different thing become uh, something new. Yes, is what yes what I know, Miss. Yes, okay, thank you, Rahma. Anyone else? Yeah, okay. So that's uh that's a, a definition that most people use on, on the word synthesize. Yeah, the key is having more than one. Yeah, synthesizing means having more than one text or one information or one uh, facts or whatever. It it must be more than one. Yeah. We'll we'll have a look later why it is one of the important skills in critical literacy. Okay. All right, key tenants of critical literacy. Yeah. Uh, reader as active participants in reading. Okay, we'll have a look what it means later on. And readers also must become active users of information in the text. We'll have a look later. And um, I found this, my students uh, found the last standards of critical literacy a bit more challenging, but don't worry. Uh, will help you get through this uh, skill, uh, you know, slowly, step by step. Yeah, the last tenet is to understand the author's intention and challenge the power relation between readers and writers. And uh, in another word, uh, expert says reading from resistant perspective. The first two tenets will be explained shortly, but I want to know whether uh, students in this room might have some ideas on what it means by the power relations between reader and writers. If you remember uh, in the first slides, I mentioned that the goal of critical literacy to identify injustice, inequalities, imbalance point of view. So when, when, we, when we talk about it, we, we will always talk about the power relations, okay? Anyone? What does, oh, maybe power relation, yeah? Maybe we're not going to talk about reader writers, but we're going to talk about power relation. Have you heard? In Indonesian, we say it, uh, hubungan kekuasaan. What does it mean? Anyone have some ideas? Unmute your mic. We can share uh, your ideas together. Anyone? No? Okay. All right. Power. Yes? Anyone? Let's try. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll call you. <laughs> okay. yeah, I, that's always the best strategy, Bu, in <laughs> online classroom. <laughs> um, okay. Miss? Yes, Ray. Uh, oh. Power relations is uh, the relations that we couldn't spare it, Miss. So, for example, if we have like, in a, uh, for example, like a, a gula, for example, like gula, it's uh, always like a uh, test. So, manis banget gitu kan. Jadi, it's the relations between gula and manis itu pasti kalau kita ngomongin gula, uh, pasti manis gitu ibaratnya. So, that's like uh, if we talk maybe about the readers, of course, read and it becomes to the writers who who create the content so i think that's the relation that we couldn't spare at it and if we talk about uh, or imagine about something so it always refer to something else because it's the relation miss so so i think that's miss, what i do <laughs> okay thank you ray uh, i think uh, based on what you said i think you really want to have sugar in your coffee now <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Uh, anyone else? I saw Kalista is raising hand. I uh, was raising hand before. Kalista, you want to try? Uh, I think so. Yes. Go ahead. 
So I think when it comes to literacy, power relation is because the author have power over the reader. So when we read, we don't necessarily have power to the author because we don't say anything to them. Like if we read, we just see everything from the text, what the author says. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe special. the only case we have power over the author is when we react to it and like write a review or go to their media or something. Okay, all right. Thank you, Kalista. What, uh, what year are you now? What semester are you now? Um, in semester five, miss. Okay, all right. Thank you, Ray, Kalista. Anyone else? Maybe from 2020 cohort. 2020, okay, so semester four. Semester four. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes, Anyone from semester, semester three. Uh, oh, oh, yes, <laughs> okay. So. Anyone want to give another examples? Don't worry, I'm not going to say whether you are wrong or 2020, right. 2020, yeah, yes, 2020 or 2018. Where are you now? <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, yeah. We have Niputu Widya Cahaya. What should yes. we call you? Difani. Oh, Difani. Call, okay. Yeah, we call her Difani. Right. Go ahead. Hello, Miss. Yes. Go ahead, Can Difani. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. yes. Um, I think a power relationship between uh, the readers and the, the writers is the ability to seek out and understand the information itself because when we once able to know and understand the information we get from the read and then we can collaborate it in the writing sentence or writing information so that uh, we can see the world uh, there and then we can elaborate our literacy information uh, to that global issues and then the others. I think that's missed. All right, thank you very much, Difani. Maybe one more. There is a under the chat box from Dev. Uh, Dev, power relations is the power of Dev. Why don't you unmute your uh, audio, Dev? Hello, Dev. Uh, um, yeah. Hello. Yes. yes hello, go Ms. ahead. Yeah, say say what you you what you wrote on the chat box. Uh, so power relation is the power of writer to influence the reader, because as a reader we need to have the resistance, like to not get easily persuaded or influenced by the writer, because we only read, we can say anything to the writer because it is not an interactive literacy, right? So I think that's it. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, you have contributed. Uh, all of you have contributed uh, to our discussion. Yeah, and I, I, we really appreciate that. Yeah, I really appreciate. Uh, so that means you are giving me some insights on where you are at the moment. Yeah, because I was talking with Ibu Susi uh, behind the screen. I want to know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, because I haven't met you before. Yeah. I I yes. don't know, you know, your background by contributing to our discussion mm -hmm. now you give me a very useful insight on where you are at the moment yes yeah? so yeah. thank you maybe All we right. need one more yeah book from yes, the, yes, the why not? from the uh, youngest cohort yes, 2020 yes. cohort please would like to say something should i search her <laughs> <laughs> come on anyone else dito would you like to is Dito here? Yes, Miss. Hello. Okay, go ahead, Dito. But, <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I don't know the answer, Miss, because uh, <laughs> when I when I heard the word the power relation, I I am thinking about uh, kekuatan orang dalam gitu. <laughs> Jadi, <laughs> okay. That's I don't good. Know. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, this is not about right or wrong. I mean, like yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Just, we just Ibu Gini wants to know. I mean, like whether you know about this term or not. Maybe Queen. I think Queen would like to say something, right, Queen? Yes, go ahead, Queen. Um, I think I also say with Dito, like I haven't <laughs> heard about this term before, but if I look at the term like power relations within the readers and the writer, I think it's how about 
it's how uh, the the author of the book uh, influence and give his or her like idea to change the reader mind or to inform or basically just to like influence the reader through the text. That's what I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Queen. So Queen, Queen and Dito are from 2020 cohort, Ibu. Okay. So that's right. the, the youngest cohort. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, great. Great to there hear from you. There is three. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so mm, I think before this... we jump, oh, anyone else? Yeah, I actually want to ask about the power relation. Yes. Is power relation only influence the writers? I mean, like in, in the context of literacy or a power relation also have an impact to the other uh, social life? Because uh, based on, uh, based on uh, Dito said, uh, he mentioned that power relation is a kind of orang dalam, so it impact on our social life also. So is that... Yes, uh, that's a very good question, I think, a very critical question as well. And you know what, we are going to talk about it. Yeah, uh, thank you for your critical question, I think. And thank what you, year Ms. are you now? What year are you now? I'm in year... Uh, <laughs> or what, what year? semester? You're, what yeah, semester? you're confused. Uh, she's from yeah. Fast Track student. Uh, yeah. so. Okay. <laughs> so that's why she can, she's confused. I mean, what year are you? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Yeah. It happens to many students. <laughs> okay, all right. So I think before, oh, anyone else would like to share? From 2018 cohort, someone, Rena, probably. Hi, Rena. Hi, Miss. Hello. Go ahead. So uh, actually, uh, this term is kind of new for me, like others when I heard about power relations, but uh, when I tried to understand the sentence, like uh, the power relations between readers and writers, like there's relations between uh, the authors and the readers, like uh, the message or how the authors can persuade or delivering the message to the audience clearly. That's, that's what I get from this actually. So that is why there is a relation within the, the others and the readers. So probably the term is called power relations. Yeah, then, okay. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Okay. I think if you, you don't have, have, yeah, thank you. Uh, if you, there's no more uh, comment, we can move. Yes, but please. There, yeah, okay. All right. So um, this is related to Ajeng's question, the, the one that I'm going to highlight actually. Yeah. So in Indonesian language, Power relation uh, is translated into hubungan uh, kekuasaan. Yeah, I want you to look at this. Okay, do you believe or not believe? Yeah, do you um do you see any power relation between you as a child and your parents? So let's let's put it this way: parents and children power relation. Do you think something or some ideas come to your mind when I mention power and child's, uh, uh, sorry, power relationship between parents and children or power relationship between Bu Susi as a lecturer and you as her students? What comes into your mind when you see those hubungan kekuasaan, power relations between you and your parents, between you and Bu Susi as a lecturer? What comes into your mind? Not uh, sugar and coffee, but I, uh, that's very interesting. Yeah, I might have to look at it deeper. Yeah, whether there's a power relation between sugar and coffee. Okay, um, anyone? What comes into your mind? Bususi as your lecturer and you as uh, her student. Is there any power relation? Oh, Res uh, Rani. Rani, uh, yes, go ahead, Rani. Oh, yeah, Maharani Nurahma. We have, yeah, we have Rani to Rani here. So, Maharani. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead, Rani. Yeah, you can I unmute here. Okay, thank you, Miss. Uh, when it comes to talking about parents and children and uh, student and teacher, I was, I was thinking about authority, where it has, uh, it has a custom, like a traditional relationship when uh, parents and child it's actually with uh, we could say the relationship it's biological whether uh, when and 
the teacher and student is about the I mean the custom of us of studying. So uh, I was thinking about the authority, which one has the more power and authority is the parents and teacher in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, Rani. Anyone else? Uh, this is this concept is very important. That's why I want to know whether you has whether you have grabbed some ideas about this before we talk about more uh, complex issues. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyone else? Kalista wrote uh, in a chat box. Maybe Kalista, you can you can also now. I mean, it's you don't have to worry whether you talk uh, much here. You know, go ahead, Kalista. Hello, Kalista. Uh, hello. Hi. Yes. Go ahead. I think it's basically from what I write and what I see in mm -hmm. power dynamics that it's either a custom. But at the same time, it's easily misused. Um, for example, parents and children. Um, a lot of cases like parents have overpower to the child and the child can do nothing about it. And I think uh, everyone has power in some ways, right? Like for example, I have power over my siblings from, uh, from our social construct. I have power over them, like I'm older, so they must listen to me. So I think in most cases, power can be easily misused. So I don't really have a positive or negative opinion in power i'm kind of like a bit neutral about it it's kind of gray yes exactly you have power as an older sibling yeah go use your power to your younger sibling <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yeah thank you very much kalista yeah that's that's a very good uh, comment yeah so power relationship yeah let's put it this way okay at the end of the semester you and ibu susi who is more powerful at the end of the semester when it comes to grading system when it comes to ibu susi uploading your grades to the system uh, who is more powerful, you as students or Ibu Susi? Ibu Susi. <laughs> Why does Ibu Susi uh, have more power than you, Queen? Because Miss Susi is in the authority. Miss Susi has like, uh, she's, her level is above our above us i mean she's the lecturer so she has the authority to grade and to you know like that's give us right in while we are right. students so that's oh, why that's right so now you started to uh you know now you started to be in a a, a, a correct a pathway yeah on what power relation means yeah so power relations <laughs> can be found in all aspects in our life the question is do you realize that or not okay do you realize it or not? Kalista, uh, I think she started to realize that you have more power uh, over your uh, younger sibling. So you can tell them what to do, right? That's that's the, the power of older sibling. I don't have, I have two older siblings, yeah? And that's what they did all the time, yeah? <laughs> to me, I'm the youngest actually. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. So yeah, power relationship can be found in many aspects of our life. Yeah, but in literacy, because we are dealing with literacy, we need to be aware that it is also found in the relationship between readers and writers, or between uh, authors and readers. Yeah, and when we talk about authors, we don't want you to think that uh, authors is only penulis buku. Yeah, authors is is is. Uh, way beyond that, yeah. Authors can also be content writer, okay. Authors can be script writers. Authors can be uh, designer, advertisement designer. Uh, authors can be uh, influencer, yeah. Authors can be uh, a government officer, and so on and so forth. Okay, so so what is the power relationship between readers and powers? That is our big task that we need to. Uh, identify, okay, and we need to identify and we need to fill those uh, gaps, the power relationship. When we talk about power relationships, you have mentioned earlier that it is usually between, it is usually imbalance between older sibling and younger sibling, between lecturers and students. So it is also found in readers and writers. Who is more powerful, the authors? or the writers and why who is more powerful here in reader and writer relationship 
Is it the writer? Hmm? Yeah, okay. So usually the readers in quotation marks, the re sorry, the, the writers in quotation marks, the writers knows it all. Yeah, a writer in quotation mark, a writer knows it all. All right, or a writer knows best. Why is it that way? Why there is a saying which is uh, which said that a writer knows best or a writer knows it all? Why? Are you a writer, everyone? A blog writer? Uh, what what kind of writer are you? You have a community of writing, something like that. It doesn't have to be a formal uh, writing, yeah. Anyone? Maybe in social media. Miss. Yeah, Diffani. Um, once I have joined a writer writing community uh, in writing novel, um, I think the writer has more authority, authority or more power. Because the author sometimes, um, not sometimes, but most other times, he or she determines and consider the plot of the uh, the story or maybe uh, the end of the story from the beginning until the end. He or she uh, is already consider it. Yes. Then very the readers, good. Yeah. yeah, very good, Diffani. Yeah, very good. So. Uh, the power relationship between reader and writer in conventional perspective, in a non-critical literary perspective, is unequal. Yeah, uh, is imbalance in a non-critical literary perspective. It means the reader is always positioned as the one who has authority, the one who has more power over the readers. But again, that is from a non-critical perspective. Okay, In a critical perspective, our job is to find out uh, what powers and what makes uh, the reader, you know, the reader like have more power over uh, sorry the writer have more power over the, the readers in what ways and it in what ways can we minimize that or remember the goals of critical literacy is to create justice so in what ways can you make it equal in some ways with the readers yeah okay that's our uh, the next topic okay let's have a look one by one um okay so this is readers as active participants so in critical literacy we heard uh this uh we often practice these readers as, as active participant but what does it really mean yeah readers as active participant means readers move beyond passively accepting the text to question and to examine the text the question to question here in indonesian is mempertanyakan yeah to mempertanyakan, yeah, to question. Okay, so reader as active participant means you have to move beyond passively accepting the text into uh, ability or attitude or disposition or skill to question it, mempertanyakan, yeah. And what what kind of question do we need to ask? What kind of interaction? I, I think one of you mentioned a little bit, yeah? Uh, I, I forgot the name, sorry. You said about not interactive with, with text. I think one of you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, actually in critical literacy, um, uh, uh, reading is very interactive. Reading and writing is very interactive. Because if it is not interactive, it means you are not yet moving from a passive reader into active readers. Okay, so reader as active participants mean you all uh, you all need to move beyond passively accepting the text to question it and to examine the text. Okay, and what does active users of information? Okay, uh, readers become active user of information means that. You need to use information in the text to relate to real situation, to relate to your own experience, to relate to your own background knowledge. Okay, when we read the text, why do you think it is important for us to relate this to our own situation? 
Okay. For example, I don't know what do you read? What do you read? Fictions? Do you read what? What? What do you like? What do you like reading? That's the basic question. Do you read a lot, everyone? What do you read? Is this generation a, a big fans of Harry Potter, or or what? What? What genre? What? What do you read? Terelier, I'm sure, because most of my students are big fans of Terelier. Are you? So what do you read, everyone? I read Terelier, Miss. See, I told you, yeah, Bu Susi, most of yes. my students, <laughs> they are big, big fans of Terelier. Yeah, okay, Rani <laughs> is one of them, okay. Uh, anyone else? What do you read? They read novels, fictions. They... Yeah. Fictions, what fiction do you like? Can you unmute your audio, Rachel? Mm -hmm. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Miss. Yes, it's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I actually, I used to like um, Percy Jackson series yeah and also um divergent trilogy of divergent yeah okay so, very good yeah i still read a lot of fiction mm, that's good yeah that's good and uh, yeah I'm, I'm very happy to to hear uh, uh people or young people yeah talk about their habit or their love of reading yeah which is very good yeah because sometimes it's a sad situation yeah but to see some of this uh, generation they don't maybe they don't enjoy reading as much as we do yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay anyway Kalista even like she reads documentary oh really right Kalista what documentary can do you, you share with us uh, hello miss I th uh, usually it's like articles from National Geographic or things like that yeah okay very good National Geographic yeah okay good okay now Rani can I ask you something Rani you said you enjoy Terelie yeah okay in what episode or what uh, section uh, in Terelie that you can read it uh, so you can relate it to your real life or to your experience or your to your background knowledge because I don't read Terelie, so sorry, I have I have no idea what he wrote. <laughs> sure, Miss, I would like to share because I would, I would like to share Terelie books because I really love Terelie books. I mean, like, um, there's a series like if you know Emma and then uh series Anak Emma. This is uh the be the background is like in the the village like in the perkampungan and i really relate because it talks about education how education moves in perkampungan is just the same what i feel now i mean like i live in uh, it's literally pedalaman kalimantan so it's, oh really okay yeah miss it yeah so i just like relate how my elementary school's experience is just the same with what happened in anak emak series books all right thank you okay and kalista when you read national geographic what do you read what parts of national geographic do you read i really like about the past myths so it's mostly about dinosaurs and new fossil discoveries okay can you relate them to uh, your own experience or maybe your uh, background knowledge um i think not because it's just uh interest for me to look about dinosaurs and old mammals yeah i think okay. for relation it's more towards other stories or other books yeah okay all right maybe uh deep down uh below your conscious level when you were a child maybe you were a big fan of dinosaurs yeah that's why you still enjoy i mean reading. i was miss yeah maybe yeah so it's always related somehow to our life okay so when we become active users of information we need to Ibu use Kin -kin, there's oh. uh may one more okay, okay uh, yeah sorry. writing sorry. Uh, in the chat box may why don't you share uh, with us this is quite interesting she likes reading a horror story may 
Hi. Also my parts of reality. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Miss. Hello. Yes, May. Uh, so, yeah, I so like why, horror Why do you stories. like that? <laughs> because um, I just like the plot twist. Sometimes the antagonist or the monster is actually the victim of the protagonist. I, I usually like those kind of plot twists, Miss. Because I relate, yes, you you want to hurt me, you the one who kill me. Are you supposed to die? You not me, <laughs> to miss. Yeah, so I just like the struggle of the the hopelessness of the protagonist or the antagonist because I can relate with them. <laughs> I hopeless. <Hey. laughs> Yes, pasta. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I'm also a big fan of thrillers, uh, yes. fiction. Yeah, and thrillers movie. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm not interested in any other stories, Bu Susi. Just thrillers. Okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's more. Uh, Ibu uh, from Amel. Amel. Amel, do you want to add something, Amel? Go ahead, Mel. Yes, Miss. So, pasta. What is that? <laughs> So that's actually a short horror story, you to miss. Okay. Oh, so, I know. Yeah, so that's see, usually have. Yeah, it it has like plot twist. For example, uh, -huh. uh one of the one of the stories that, uh, let me let me tell you one of the story. Uh, tadi malam, <laughs> tadi malam, uh, saya melihat. Oh yeah. Tadi, uh, tadi malam saya menangis ketika memotong bawang. Tidak, tidak kusangka ternyata bawang sudah tidak ada. Itu miss at least like ternyata yang diiris-iris malam tuh bawang. It's like bawang is a person, not not an onion. So, but oh my God. ada yang versi okay. longernya gitu miss. Uh, I see. And that's yeah, it's like creepy and then like spooky and I love that. I don't know why. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, oh, okay, Divani also mentioned in the chat, yeah, you wrote to create the sense or build the chemistry in the stories. Okay, that's right. Okay, anyone else? Okay, uh, when you are represented in the text you are reading, yeah, for example, uh, Rani can relate uh, the, 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 uh, something with your own situation. It means that we are presented in the text that the author used. How do you feel when you believe that you are also presented, that your background knowledge is presented in the text, your experience is presented in the text? How, how does it make you feel with the text? when you found yourself presented? Um, does, it make you, does it make you enjoy it more because you are presented? Hey, this story is about, this story is also about me living in a village. So does it make you like, oh, I, I can relate this. Does it make you feel that way? Yes. Yeah, I think that uh, kind of that feeling. Yes. I that's mean, like right. I can, I can imagine the situations, gitu loh, Miss. Yeah, that's right. So that is uh, active user of information. Yeah, active user of information is we always relate the text with the real situation. But unfortunately, not all the texts written by authors can be related, or not all teachers, for example, when they are teaching reading or when they are teaching uh, writing or whatever subjects, they can relate that to students or students' own experience. Uh, Bu Susi yeah. mentioned in the beginning that you might choose a teaching career later on. Uh, so you might choose to become teachers. When you are teaching in a critical perspective, uh, we want to make sure that you always relate or connect your subjects, whatever you are teaching, to your students' real life. Because when you see yourself presented in the text, you will have more positive feelings towards reading. Uh, you, you will be, you will be, you know, enjoy more. You will uh, enjoy the company of your teacher more when the teacher can uh, facilitate, acknowledge, recognize your own experience and your background knowledge. 
Okay, so that's active uses of information. So this is also uh, an attitude of active reading. Yeah, an attitude of active reading is constantly relating the text with your own experience. Okay. Yeah, Bugin Gin. Uh, yes. Uh, there's a, another uh, comment from uh, Kalista. Yes. So she said that she's, uh, she's quite happy uh, when she reads the uh, story that represents her. I think, right, Kalista? makes her wants to read more I think exactly it, yeah exactly yeah i think uh when the character has the same flaw as the reader i think mm -hmm. the reader is either happy or maybe sad and feel quite cold oh, okay. about it. but it it'll for, for sure make them keep reading more that's <laughs> right yeah and you know it's actually relatable in many many aspects of your life yeah when you see a celebrity for example uh no body positivity is on trend now yeah at the moment are you are you familiar with that uh, campaign that movement are you familiar with that yes please okay are you all familiar with that kind of movement at the only running yeah miss we heard it a lot yeah okay so you heard body positivity when you look at uh kylie jenner's <laughs> without filters yeah without uh apa, without filters without uh fillers and then you see that oh kylie jenner also have some problems with her skin just like me okay or uh, a top model uh, obela hadid uh, has some a stretch mark for example and now more and more celebrity are very proud of their stretch mark yeah when I grew up, nobody talked about it, right, Ms. Susie? Yes. Did of you course. experience that? No, no. Yeah, when we uh, when we grow up, we oh, try that, to cover that up. shows uh, uh, how old I am. <laughs> it's just showing you that I am very yeah. old. Yeah. When I grew up, <laughs> nobody talked about uh, stretch mark is the sign of bravery. Okay, nobody yeah. talks that it is a sign of your struggle in life because you create a new life within you and so on and so forth. Now people are talking about it and you are lucky that you live in that era where people ce celebrate what was considered as taboo, okay? It was considered as taboo. It was considered yeah. as something that shouldn't be possessed by women, yeah? But now, yeah, it is an example, yeah? So when, when you see celebrity showing their stretch marks, celebrity showing their pimples, celebrity showing, uh, you know, that they are not perfect, you know, that they skip schools, maybe something like that. You will straight away, you know, having that positive attitude with him or her because you see yourself in them. Yeah, you see yourself. So that's why, as a critical teacher, you need to always relate uh, the courses you are teaching with students' own background, students' own experience to build that chemistry. Yeah, you mentioned about chemistry to build that uh, a relationship, uh, an equal one. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, anyone else, Buzuzi, from the yeah? Table? There is L. He says that. Um, what what do you what do you mean, L? You're while reading daily zodiac. Can you just turn on your uh, audio, Al? No, Miss. I just uh, noticed when Miss Gin Gin said about uh, when you read something and it represents yourself. Yeah, it's happened when you read some yeah, zodiac and horoscope yeah, daily. When you read some mag magazine, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that may also be counted. <laughs> And there is Amel about uh, Mel. Why don't you turn on your camera? Uh, not camera. Yeah, camera and audio probably. Mel, it's been a while. I didn't see you. Hi, Amel. Yes, Miss. Hi. Yes, miss. Yeah, maybe you just turn on your. Uh, yeah, say something. Uh, you mentioned uh, something. So I actually not at home right now, miss. Oh, okay. As usual, I'm on my way to Palembang, <laughs> and I'm going. I'm going to just uh, add about that movement about body positivity, 
that I realize now lots of celebrities embrace their skin, like the their flaws. Like for example, they show their pores. That pores are actually normal. Acne are normal, and then they have scars, and then they are not actually perfect. So people are more people feels like that's actually acceptable, and you don't have to worry if you have the same problem with them. So okay. that's more relatable to us. Okay, all right, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, I think uh, Amel is the last person who wrote in the chat box, so we can move on. Okay, all right, <clears throat> right, very good. Now let's uh, have a look at uh, that issue in terms of uh, the perspective of identify the, the author's intention or reading from resistance perspective. Uh, I don't know whether you have re I don't know whether you have uh, heard. Uh, this kind of attitude in reading or this kind of types of reading. But in critical literacy, you need to be aware that there is a certain attitude which is called reading from resistant perspective. Okay, Reading from resistance perspective. What does resistance mean to you? Anyone? Resistance. Does it ring you a bell? What does it mean? Anyone? Resistance? All right. So in reading, in reading, when you are reading from resistance perspective, it means you are ready to question the author's intention by examining the text and read it from a, a perspective of, of a person of different background to the one presented in the text. So that is resistance in perspective of reading, in perspective of critical literacy. It is uh, actually quite similar to the to its own definition, yeah. So resistance is meant to resist, yeah. Uh, but in reading, it is uh, it means questioning the author intention and read it from a perspective of a person of different background to the one presented in the text. And how does it look like? We're going to have a look in the next slides. Uh, okay, uh, reading from. Okay, I think we will jump here. Yeah, reading from, uh, nah, okay, this one. All right, reading from different perspective. Okay, it means you need to be ready to ask the, read, to ask the author or to, to ask the text, how would this information, how would this advertisement, how would this movement, how would this uh, symbol, text, or whatever you read or view, how would they be different if it is told or narrated from a different perspective? Let's say from a different religious background, like the one presented in the text, or from different racial or cultural linguistics, or from different socioeconomic status, or from different gender and other differences in perspective. So as a critical uh, reader, as a, a person who's, uh, who's aiming to embrace, embrace critical literacy, you need to be always interact with the text yeah, by imagining or not only imagining, but also you write, maybe you write your own uh, narrative, you write your own story, but it is told from a different perspective. Yeah, and what we mean by perspective could be religious, racial, cultural, uh, linguistics, socioeconomic status, gender. Can you uh, can you imagine other perspective here apart from this religious, racial, socioeconomic, gender? Um, yeah, I think this uh, education might be here, socioeconomic status. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, so. As a as a uh, someone who's who embrace critical literacy, you need to have a look at these differences. Okay, so what are the question that will help you uh, to to develop your critical literacy, or later on to help your students develop critical literacy, or to help you change the way you think? Yeah. Remember, critical literacy is a way of thinking and a way of life. And we need to practice, all right? These questions need to be practiced all the time. Yeah? As I said earlier, this is a lifelong learning. Okay, It doesn't stop when I end our uh, Zoom meeting. 
It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop when Ibu Susi finish her subject on literacy. It doesn't end when you graduate from this university. It doesn't end there. It will never end, yeah, because critical literacy is lifelong learning. So it is a it, it must be a change in the way you think, change in uh, in a way of life. Okay, so we need to practice this question all the time. Okay, the first question. What did I learn about myself as a reader, writer, and learner? Okay. Why do you think the first question is important in critical literacy? Why do you need to ask yourself, what do you learn as a reader, as a writer, as a learner? I want you to imagine that, have you watched Squid Game? Yes. Do you watch it? Do you enjoy mm -hmm. it? Um, in some ways, I think it's a lot of people missed the point and it kind of pissed me off. Okay, all right. All right, or uh, the fiction that you read, yeah, or the news that you've been reading or whatever it is that you have been reading. What did you learn as a reader, writer, learner? My question is, why is it important? Or if that's question, if that question is too difficult, maybe we can start with, what what have you been reading uh, so far or what have you been watching so far and uh, what did you learn as you read the text as you watch that as you view that what did you read what, what did you learn as a reader or writer or learner so when you watch squid game what did you learn as a viewer sebagai penonton what did you learn about yourself ayo Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, uh, anyone? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kalista, is it? What's the question again, Miss? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. When you watch, uh, uh, look, this is just an example. Yeah, it doesn't okay. have to be Squid Game. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's just uh, an example. So, uh, I want you to think about what. Uh, what you have been reading so far, okay, or what you have been viewing so far, yeah, and when you read, as you read along, okay, as you watch along, what did you learn about you as a, re as a writer, as a reader, sorry, as a viewer or as a reader, what do you learn sebagai pembaca, sebagai penonton, what did you learn? Um, I think it helped seeing more perspectiveness and from squid game itself i can realize my own privilege and how my privilege is costing other people their own um chaos and like uh, things like that because in this i think the movie is criticizing uh capitalism and the about the 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 illusion of choice under it and also the whole power dynamic thing like they talk about equality but there's no equity in the show so i think it made me uh, realize about uh, who i am as a person and how i can make myself better for society and maybe it kind of challenged my beliefs also okay very good anyone else it doesn't have to be that specific movie it can be anything okay or maybe i should take you to this first yeah uh, maybe i should take you to this right so in critical literacy, when we are talking about text, okay, we are talking about different modes to express meaning. Okay, when we talk about text, it is not limited to written text. No, yeah. So in critical literacy perspective, there are many different modes to express meaning, and this can also be interpreted as text in in critical literacy perspective. Okay, first is speech. Or spoken language, right? Speech or spoken language, uh, yeah, just like what I am I'm now doing, all right. Just like when you are listening to people talking, when the, the president is talking, when uh, you know a news reporter, when the influencer is talking, yeah, that's also speech, yeah, all right. And gesture, okay, gestures is also uh, text. Why? Because it expresses meanings. Okay, do you, um, that's, a, that's a very sad news, yeah, a couple of months ago, uh, when I think it happens in Bandung, yeah, or, or in West Java, 
So there were um, uh, some students, high school students, who involved in a fight. Okay. And I read it very carefully. It was because when they were interacting in their social media account, one of them, I think, gave uh, an emoji, which can be interpreted as an invitation to fight. Have you read that? Did, did, does it come, does it ring you a bell that, you know, that fight between students? I think maybe last month or a couple of months ago, I read it very carefully yeah? and I follow the news. Yeah. So, uh, oh, do you know that emoji? I think you, you can look in your phone. Yeah. I think emoji with the fist, something like this. Do you know that? <laughs> yes, oh, yes. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is, this is the emoji, yeah, the fist. Yeah. <laughs> that's ridiculous yeah but it you know ridiculous in that sense but it also open your it, it open minds it opens my mind and it should also opens your horizon that gestures is an active mode of ex expressing meaning because you know many many people interpret it uh, in the way they are intended or sometimes in in not in the way they are intended to be yeah, okay. Right. For example, if you uh, oh, there's also a, a fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's you know because of online learning pandemic and when they meet, you know, when the student meets uh, face to face, they become lots of energy. We are not going into the right uh, place. Yeah. So there's also a, a fight between students who are also about um, uh, uh, eye gaze tatapan mata eye gaze and they involve in a fight yeah because an eye gaze was interpreted as um, you know an arrogant attitude uh, maybe another invitation to fight yeah yeah I, I i remember those two cases yeah so gestures here is also a text and that is a mode to express meaning yeah as a good uh, as a good citizen, <laughs> I want you to use emoji wisely, because yeah, it can be interpreted maybe not in the way it was intended for you, but people interpret it different way. All right, so gestures that's a, a mode yeah of of expressing meaning, and written language. So text traditionally text uh, means only written language, but not in critical literacy not in uh, a broad way of literacy okay so written language um, yeah it was uh, conventionally only this yeah and mathematical notation why do you think they uh, express meaning anyone why do mathematical notation express meaning anyone Especially for us language, uh, yes. <laughs> who are in majoring in language. Come on, yes. go ahead. Felix, probably you want to share something, Felix? <laughs> Mathematical notations. Why? How do they express meaning? Mm. Hi, Felix. No. Yes, uh, go ahead. Maybe through symbol, miss. Through symbol. Yeah. Yes. I don't really know, actually. But yes. yes. Yes, that's right, Felix. It is through the symbol. Do you know this symbol? Plus, minus. Yeah, plus. Plus, what does plus mean in math? Um, you add. That's the, right. Yeah. yeah, that symbol expresses a specific meaning. Yeah, that particular symbol expresses specific meaning. It means you are adding something. Uh, and, and another symbols, they are expressing another uh, meanings, yeah? Although I'm not very good at <laughs> interpreting math symbols or math notations, yeah? Lucky, yeah, I, I don't use that major. <laughs> <laughs> but I know basic notation, yeah? So these also express meanings and this also can be interpreted as text because they express meaning. Also drawings, okay? Drawings, in fact, can be very powerful, all right? Drawings can be very, very powerful. You know, many psychologists, they interpret a child drawing, yeah? So they are, you know, they ask a child to, to draw something about 
uh, her mom, her dad, her family, her house, dog, pets, whatever. And that drawing can be interpreted in a very powerful statement. Yeah, so a drawing can reveal a lot about what's going on. Yeah, it can reveal whether the child has been abused, for example, or it can reveal whether they have a good home, a good relationship with parents, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so drawing is also a text. Yeah, and as a critically literate uh, person, you are also expected to be able to look at drawings in a more critical perspective. Right. Yeah. They Sri mentioned that it's yeah. always uh, included in psychology tests, yeah? Uh, the Sri from 2018 cohort. Yes, yes. I remember, yeah, I had to draw. Uh, in, yeah, in one of those tests, yeah, long ago. <laughs> okay, right. So drawings can be powerful. Yeah, if you look at uh, drawings from refugee children, yeah, I, I, I often read about it, yeah. Uh, or even drawing, um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 just a powerful, yeah, can be interpreted in a very powerful meaning. Next is photographic images or digital moving images. It means it could be movies, okay, posters, uh, photography, um, and many more. Yeah, this is also text because they express meaning. And the last one is music. Yeah, why does music express meaning? In what way? Anyone? Why is it considered as text? And how does it carry meaning? Yeah, Desri, can you unmute your audio there, Desri? Yes, Miss. Go ahead. Uh, I think uh, because I love music and I really enjoy music and I was that um, often influenced by music. That's why I uh, like to listen to uh, like a group band. Uh, I'm a boy band that uh, create music that I like because that is uh, relate to uh, my life and my experience. Uh, it is mostly because of the lyrics. And my was that my habit is uh, I always listen to the music, to the song, and always pay attention to the lyric first. Uh, and then after the melody, <laughs> not the melody first uh, and the lyrics. So the lyric, uh, the lyric comes first for you. Yes. Yeah? And then, yes. okay, all right, that's good. Yeah. So see, uh, it is also a, an evidence that uh, music is a text because it expresses meaning. Yeah. And uh, meaning can be different from uh, you and from other persons. Yeah. So uh, actually, these are all texts in critical literacy perspective. Okay. Why? Because they all carry meanings. Right. All right. Now, now go back to this kind of questions. All right. So what did I learn about myself as a reader, writer, learner? For example, when I read a thriller series. Yeah. Uh, 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 I like, um, oh, suddenly I have a blank uh, mental. Yeah, I like uh, The Girl with Dragon Tattoo, the series. Yeah, uh, it's a, a trilogy as well. Yeah, when I, re when I read those series, I learn that I am a very impatient reader. Okay, when I, when I, when I read uh, all those books, I learn that I am an impatient reader. Why? Because sometimes I skip. Yeah, because I want to know who really did this. Yeah, uh, or I want to know. Uh, 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 I want to know. I want to get to the point where they identify the murder, for example, or or the killer or whatever. Yeah, so that's why it is very important. Yeah, this is this question is very important because it helps you to reflect. Yeah, that can my first question is. Why, why is this important? Why is this question important? Because it helps you to reflect. And reflective, uh, reflective thinking is also one of skills in critical literacy. All right. Next question. What techniques did the author use to influence my thinking? All right. Uh, you need to be aware that there are many strategies, there are many techniques the author used to influence your thinking. Okay. What are the ways? What are the techniques? Everyone, what are the techniques that they use to influence your thinking? 
Oke, okay, we'll, we'll have a look later in my other slides. Yeah, oh, Rani, Rani, Rani yeah. sorry, Rani, go ahead. Uh, so I think I will this is from Terelia books because I mostly read Terelia books. Uh, so in, in, if we pay attention to Terelia books, all of the books use um, the first person. So in this book, when we read, we... Uh, kita, uh, we become the first person. So like, I feel like he is trying to. Um, so try so to... Uh, Rani, does the word uh, does Terelia use the word uh, saya or 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 what? Uh, it depends, Miss. Kalau misal, uh, kan sometimes in his book tuh ada yang kayak uh, bahasa daerah gitu, Miss. So if uh, if the books. Uh, talk about uh, uh, latar belakangnya di daerah uh, he use mostly use pakai aku okay right very good so the use of pronouns yeah okay that's good that's one of the strategies to influence your thinking okay what else hello miss yeah remember guys these are all texts yeah it doesn't have to be written text all the time yeah it could be you see digital moving images movies berarti music okay yeah who else hello miss okay three i think uh that is uh the things that are really close to us it's from the advertisement it's um, mostly content of certain color or images to influence our thinking like uh, the beauty product cosmetics it it's always shows a good image of the result of this product so our thinking is oh if i use this product it will be resulting in this image so i will buy it and that is for example and Very certain good. yeah certain colors also i think can provoke um certain feeling or certain yeah that thing in the advertisement yeah very good what else what are the other strategies okay all right we'll talk about it uh, later now the next question what does this writing movie text ads dialogue mean to me you also need to ask that question to yourself because your voice is important yeah what you think about the the text is very important and you have to bear that in mind yeah all right now next is this text presenting a balanced view of the issue okay a balanced view i think i have mentioned that in 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 the, in the previous slides whether the text is presenting something from another perspective yeah or a, a, a presenting a person who has different background to the one presented in the text and you need to ask this question whether the author or the text present a balanced view of the issue all right the next question do i need to consult another source of information this is also very important can you guess why why it's important for us to consult another source of information I think Ray can answer that question or respond to the questions, Ray. It relates to your thesis, right? Oh, okay. All right. Ray, are you here? Hello, Ray. Uh, could you please repeat the question, Miss? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The question is uh, uh, the question that we are now at is do I need to consult another source of information? And my question is why is it important for us to? consult or to check another source of information is it important or not um yes miss for me it's important because when we uh find another uh resources so we have a new newer perspective of the thing that we uh want to uh to do so so it's like um uh it's like yeah, I think it, it can be helping us to to get new perspective, Miss, from yes. the consultation. Yes. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah. So it's very important to for us to have more information or to be able to yeah. synthesize. Remember, I asked that meaning, that word, the meaning of that word in the beginning. Uh, you need to be able to synthesize more than one source, yeah, on the same topic. Okay, yeah. whose voice? Oh, any anyone else? Yeah, Divani said that it shows the validations of the information. 
That's right. Yeah, to show the validity of information, you need to consult another source. That's good. Okay, next question. Whose voice is represented here? When you hear the word voice, it's not the audio voice. Yeah, but voice uh, should be interpreted uh, more uh, more comprehensive way. So voice uh, can be perspective, opinions, characteristics, and so on. Yeah. So voice is not suara, yeah, but suara in abstract meaning. Yeah. Perspective, opinion, characteristic, characters, uh, yeah, and so on and so forth. So whose voice is represented here and whose voice is missing? Okay. We'll talk about it later. Does this information agree with what I already know? This is also related to the question of consulting another source of information. Becoming a critically literate uh, citizen, a critically literate person, you need to ask this question, whether the information in the text agree with what you already know in that uh, particular issue or topic. Okay, next, how is this text? This text changing the way I think. Yeah, this is also a very critical question. Uh, a critically literate uh, student or person will be very careful whether the text or the author started to change the way you think about something. Yeah, and how would this be different if the one that I show you? I'm going to show you that later again. And what is the author's intention? Do I agree with the text? Okay. A uh, text is not um, a holy text. Yeah, religious texts are different. Yeah, but uh, other texts you can agree or disagree with the text. Okay, there is no rules which says that you must agree with all the texts apart from religious texts. Yeah, because I think that's a, a little bit of different types of texts. But with the most of the texts, you are free whether you are agree or disagree with the information, as long as you have evidence, as long as you can prove that they are, uh, you know, information they are missing and so on and so forth, right? And does this information make sense to me? Okay, is it logical? Do you think it makes sense the way the writer uh, write his ideas and so on and so forth? And the last one is related to, uh, uh, I think one of you mentioned it a little bit, that we don't have power uh, towards the author because unless, what, what did you say earlier? Yeah, mm, uh, who said this? I forgot. Um, but action, what I'm what I'm saying is action doesn't have to be that way. Okay, when you disagree with an information, when we you, when you disagree with an author, when you disagree with the text, with the movie, with an ads, with a fiction, you know. It doesn't have to end up being a, a violent action. Yeah, you, it doesn't have to involve you in, in, in a violent demonstration, for example. You disagree with information in Time magazine. So you come and you bring uh, your followers, maybe, to have a, a violent demonstration in front of that magazine. No, in critical literacy, action can be interpreted as wide as possible. But they also carefully say that you need to be able to be very sensitive to your context or situation. Look, in Australia, it is very common for primary school children to write letters to their mayor, yeah, Kuali Kota. They write letters. It's very important. It's very common for them to talk to authority in that way. Yeah, you know, because we have different systems and so on. But in Indonesia, it might not be very common. But there are some channels of communication that you can always go through. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that way. All right. In Australia, for example, oh, I'm I'm giving you lots of uh, example from Australia, yeah, because I know what uh, happened. Yeah, because I lived there for for five years. In Australia, it is very common for citizen like us to say bad words to the prime minister. Yeah. Bad, bad words, uh, I, I, I even can say it, yeah, but the, the F words, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, you know, I think everyone can say that in Australia. You can say that F word to your prime minister in your social media account. 
okay it it's it's happening like that yeah so that's why becoming critically literate person you need to be very very sensitive to your context yeah you need to be very considerable you need to be tolerant yeah in other way you are also critical but also a tolerant because you are judging from different perspective okay so being critical it doesn't mean that you are finding faults tidak mencari kesalahan you are not finding faults yeah but you are giving different perspective okay so what is happening in australia you can say f word to your prime prime minister it won't work here okay it won't work here although maybe you have a very critical point of view to be uh, to say to our president for example but it won't work here so action so what does action mean then in critical literacy remember critical literacy is a way of thinking so some expert says if you change your perspective okay if you change the way you think about a text that is also an action okay so it doesn't have to be like demonstration because i i disagree with terelie so i came to his office yeah and i come maybe i have a demo demo in front of his publishing company or something like that it doesn't have to be that way okay but changing the way you think about it all right uh, giving a fresh perspective that is also action okay uh, remember these are all the questions that you need to practice yeah uh, it doesn't come without practice so you need to practice this a lot of time okay we talk about it that these are texts because they express meaning all right look at the techniques or strategies the author used to influence readers thinking yeah first they sometimes use persuasive or provoking sentences if you look at this tagline are you familiar with this especially girls girls are you familiar with this tagline miliki kulit cantik cerah dalam satu minggu are you familiar with this they are everywhere yes, yes. <laughs> they are everywhere right everywhere yeah everywhere in in all ads in all texts in in whatever all right sometimes they use spec and figures for example anxiety affects 18.1 percent of the population every year okay it may be effects yeah but we don't know right images look at this image okay uh this is quite a viral this is this went viral i think a couple of months ago did you notice this what was happening in this image are you familiar with what was going on this is quite viral anyone yeah, see pollution familiar. yeah felix I think it's pollution regarding the sea pollution. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this went viral, yeah. When a diver found a seahorse holding a cotton bud, yeah. Holding a cotton bud, yeah. So it, it went viral. So this is a very strong image. And this can influence your thinking, okay. Evokes strong emotion. It could be by music. What do you think when you hear this song? Do you want to sing it? Does you see anyone is a singer in your in your class? <laughs> yes, we do. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> someone, okay. please, should I say the name? <laughs> oh, no, no, you don't have to sing it. But if, if you want, I'm just, I'll be very happy. Yeah? Uh, a, a music from specific uh, types, specific genre, uh, will evoke strong emotion. Yeah, like this uh, music. Yeah everybody hurts that will evoke your uh, emotion okay so these are some actually some we have al bugin again oh uh, yeah l is a singer last week yeah last week he sang for us oh really oh i have to come to your class again Busuzi, to be able to <laughs> yes. listen to <laughs> l. okay all right so these are some techniques there are many other techniques or strategies and as a critically literate student you need to be able to identify other strategies this is just some yeah not all okay and you need to be aware of this okay now uh, this is a point where they have to work on something ibu susi yeah let, let me check uh, okay yeah maybe let's have a look here 
Yeah, we are going to practice. Okay, I think I have. Uh, uh, I have come to a point where I want Abu Susi and I want you to practice what yes. I just said earlier. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we are going to practice a, a question about whether the text present a balanced point of view, and to remind you, different point of view will be from this. Okay, but again, this is just some. Tadi kan, uh, in, in, I ask you, yeah, whether can you can you think about other uh, perspective that may be included? But I think like education, it could be here. Yeah. Socioeconomic yes. status, uh, language, linguistic could be here. Yeah. Okay, uh, and so on and so forth. Politics, politics could be here. Different politics. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you agree with this. You disagree with. You are a big fan of uh, maybe uh, five years ago. You were maybe there were uh, you know a very hot debate whether you are big fans of Jokowi or big fans of uh, uh, Prabowo. Yeah. yeah. So different politics maybe here. Yeah, and so on and so forth. Okay, this is something I want you to work on. Uh, Busuzi, do you think yeah. we can divide them into groups or should yeah. we let them work on their own? Uh, how do you like to work on this activity class? Do you want to do you want to work in a group? Or is it easier? You... Which one is easier for you? Is it easier for you to work on your own? Can I can I put okay? Can I put you into groups? So I just random random. Uh, I will. Uh, how many groups? Oh, how many people are here? Thirty-three. Um, yeah, which one is easier for you guys? Do you prefer to work on your own or in groups? It really doesn't matter as long as we have these mm -hmm. three uh, yeah. topics covered. I think we can is... uh, work in group, Miss. Okay. Group. Okay. So maybe I just because we have thirty-three. Uh, maybe a group of five. Yeah. Is it okay? Yes. Yes, Miss. Okay. So let me have the group. How long will they work but on this? Bususi, uh, yeah. it doesn't have to be in a breakout rooms, yeah, because we oh, need okay. to. Do you think because we need to we need to uh, look at them? What What do you think? I see. Can we assign them into breakout rooms or? Yeah, we can. Bu then so and we can I will. Go one uh, by yeah. One. Yeah. We can. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can. Join. Okay. So. Uh, well then, uh, please listen to what you are going to do. Uh, we are going to practice just one question, yeah. Okay. Uh, from all of these questions, remember uh, I said earlier you need to practice this. You need to always practice this to nourish your development in critical literacy. And one of the question we are going to practice in groups today is this question. Oops. Do these texts present a balanced viewpoint? Okay, and when we talk about viewpoint, I want you to look at this again. Okay, all right. Uh, let's talk about you can talk about a famous Indonesian folklore. Here, uh, the picture is do you know what this picture is? <clears throat> Sangkuriang, yeah, very good. Uh, it doesn't have to be Sangkuriang, yeah. It doesn't have to be Sangkuriang, but it can be uh, anything. Yeah, but it just talk about a famous Indonesian folklore, uh, Malin Kundang, for example, or maybe someone from Bali can think about a famous folklore. And you can also talk about Disney story. This is Red Riding Hood. Yeah, mm -hmm. or you can talk about uh, this is. It doesn't have to be a whitening product. No, no, it doesn't have to be that way. It, but the number three is an advertisement yeah an ads it doesn't have to be whitening product i mentioned whitening product because uh i mean uh, i put uh, the image here about whitening product so you can choose you don't have to talk about them uh, all of them choose just one and then carefully carefully talk about these within your groups the first question who are the main characters presented and then who are the other characters that are not presented but you believe should be there okay karakter yang menurut kamu harus ada tapi tidak ada that's the meaning of this okay who are the other characters that are not presented what or whose perspective or voices are presented 
And another spectrum is what or whose perspective or voices are hidden. All right, and a very important question, why does the author highlight specific characters or characteristics? And the other spectrum is why does the author silence another characters or characteristics, okay? Uh, that's the thing that you need to work on in your group. Do you have any question first before Bususi assign you into breakout rooms? Yeah. And the question, what you have to work on? Can someone repeat the instructions, uh, please? Fadil, are you here? Hi, Fadil. So Hello. It... <laughs> so maybe it is clear for you? Mm, yeah okay i think it's clear. okay maybe you could uh, repeat again okay why don't why don't you uh, repeat uh, the instructions me and then we can confirm uh, I, I still not quite understand miss <laughs> okay I'm lost yeah, yeah. yeah okay you... okay so uh, you choose whether you are going to talk about a famous indonesian folklore or a disney story or an ads yeah iklan right. choose one and then carefully discuss this with your uh, members of your group, okay? The first question is, who are the main characters presented? And then at the same point, you also talk about other characters that are not presented, but you believe should be there, okay? And then the next question, what or whose perspective or voices are presented? And uh, you also say about perspective that are hidden, Okay, and then you also think about in your group why does the author highlight specific characters or characteristic, and why does the author silence, membungkam silence, yeah? Why does the author highlight, mengapa ditonjolkan, and why does the author silence, another characters, characters or characteristic? Is that clear? Yes, clear, Miss. Thank Very you. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay, Bu Susi, uh, yeah. do you think 15 minutes or? Yeah. Okay, 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah, Bu. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, okay, are you able to join the class? Uh, the, what is it? Uh, the breakout room? Yes, miss. Okay. Sorry, how many groups? Uh, we have six. Oh, okay, six. Yeah, group okay. of five. So there will not be too crowded in, in one group. I see, okay. And yeah. uh, here, uh, Tasha and Nadila in also in this group? No, no, we are in the main room. I oh, think okay, Tasha okay. should join. Maybe they haven't joined the group Oh, yet. I see, I see, yeah. okay. All right. So we will come back in at three o'clock, yeah, Bu Susi? Yeah, yes, Ibu. Okay. So let me share the, let me yeah. broadcast this. All right. Uh, Bu Susi, is it okay yeah. for me? I need to go to a toilet first. Yes, go ahead, Ibu. <laughs> yeah, please.
kenapa di eh Miguel Miguel nggak tahu kenapa dilarang ya yeah. hello hi miss what main? story are you choosing and we are thinking Coco from Disney oh okay that one yeah 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 any questions uh so far clear miss so we just have to like pick one right miss between yes. Folklore, yeah, folklore. Disney and ads. Yes, yes. Okay, by the way, I, I'm quite distracted with your uh, profile picture, Rachel. <laughs> so that's critical literacy as well, right? <laughs> I'm responding to your uh, uh, picture. Profile <laughs> picture. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> yeah, I think you know what? in the afternoon. Coffee, yeah, in the afternoon <laughs> yeah. with ice coffee. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so maybe I will listen to you uh, to your discussion just for a while. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be a silent uh, observer. <laughs> observer, sorry. Okay, so you wanna guys? Are we Disney, going to or maybe before? you're nervous? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I will leave the room then. <laughs> okay, enjoy your discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome. The point is, is that the point is that the ads were for a beauty enhancing products. I think it seems like, you know, to make the consumer, the buyer feel, uh, feels that their current level of attractiveness are different from what they should ideally be. So we, we, we constantly following this beauty trends, beauty standards and something like that. So, okay, that's a start. Uh, that's a quiet, interesting uh, beginning. What move on to topic selanjutnya. Uh, apa tadi subtopicsnya? Kita harus membahas tentang apa? What are the highlights? The what? character? Yeah, the character. Oh. Presented. Who are the main characters? Whose voice, yeah. Whose voice um, are being... What happened with this group? <laughs> Are you all okay? Fadil? Yes, Miss. Rahma, Arin, Nadila. Okay. Yeah, because you're not talking to each other. You're writing to each other. Okay, you're commenting through writing. That's quite interesting. Any questions? Do you have questions? Is it clear? Yes or not? Okay. All right. Okay. So this is this is group three, right? Okay, let me go to group four. Okay, see you in the main room. Berarti mostly ini enggak present balance few points ya. No sih, enggak sih. Kalau dari advertisement. <coughs> Coba aja juga dipikir kalau misalnya ada advertisement uh, dari review-review uh, produknya. Pasti yang di-highlight itu kayak yang bagus-bagus doang. Iya lah. <laughs> <laughs> Berarti mau gimana deh? Oke, jadi jawab why does the outer silence uh, another character atau karakteristik uh, to make it easier to influence the people untuk so, invention-nya si produknya itu. Because they want to sell products kalau misalnya mereka emphasize 
um, you don't have to have lighter skin to be beautiful. Gak ada yang mau beli kayaknya. So, to, apa namanya tadi yang kalian bilang to, intinya mau jual produk influence. Terus kayak mau nge-set beauty standard gitu, Kak? Iya, benar-benar. Waduh. Ini lag ya. Oke, berarti udah kejawab ya nomnomnya. Heeh. Pelangin deh, pelangin. Kamu <laughs> ngomong. Okay. Okay. Kar one of us kayak kayaknya uh, apa namanya? laporan uh, sepresan hasil diskusi deh kayaknya. Hmm. Hmm. No. Kayak karena kegiatan gitu loh. Hello Miss. Hello Miss. Hi, hi. I'm Miss. Yeah. Just ignore me. I'm 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 trying to listen to you. Uh, Miss, oh, we okay. have question, Miss. Yang, do this text presents a balanced viewpoint? What does it mean, mm-hmm. Miss? Yeah, it's for example, uh, you know, in the story of uh, tadi siapa? Who, 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 what's the story is about? Uh, sang kuriang, okay. Sang kuriang, is it like in term? Well, if you want to look at uh, uh, in gender, yeah. Uh, remember, uh, Miss uh, Miss Ginkin or Buginkin mentioned like there are so many aspects that you can see, right? From the religious, from the gender, from uh, social culture, what else? From race, yeah. If you look at okay, maybe if you look at in the uh, one aspect, for example, gender. About Sangkuriang, do you think that uh, Sangkuriang story can, uh, I mean, present like balance uh, uh, voice from between gender and uh, oh, sorry between male and female? Okay, so you you need to choose about that. Yeah, you need to choose the aspect. You you, you don't have to uh, choose all the aspects. Okay, Is that clear? Miss. Yeah. Yes, Miss. Okay. Uh, jadi kan menurut aku kan yang Malin kundang tadi balance nih soalnya kan w- cewek atau cowok kalau durhaka sama orang tua tetap dapat azabnya. Yes. Um, but uh, if you say the girl and the boys, it means that we only took the the gender side. Yeah. What about the satu aja kak kata Miss. It's okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, like if you want, no, no. I mean, like if you want to see from the other side aspects, that's okay. I mean, oh. from mm. I mean, this is not about your your point of view is right and the other point of view is wrong. No, I mean, like everyone has their own uh, point of view. But what you need to do here in critical literacy, you need to provide your rationale, right? Oh, okay. You can you can disagree with this. For example, I don't agree that you know, like. Um, Malin Kundang is is I mean it's not guilty because you know maybe he's not you know like he feels bad that uh, his wife will find out that his mother is not from the rich uh, you know uh, family something like that so I mean I can say like that right it's not that I I'm wrong because my point of view that yeah okay I. I If I'm married with a you know with a rich guy, so or with a rich man or with a rich woman, so I want to be you know uh, maintain or keep my prestige, right? So especially for male, for example, right? So this is not again, this is not about right or wrong. Yeah. Oh, okay, Miss. Jadi kayak bisa juga ambil niatnya dari sosioekonomi ya, Miss. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think I get the point. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, Miss. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, Miss. Miss. Um, kalau dari gender tadi menurut aku balance. Kalau dari sosial ekonomi gimana? Enggak sih, ya enggak sih. Soalnya pas ditinggalin emang emaknya itu hidup sebatang kara gitu. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, I don't know, yeah. I think it's different yeah, because, yeah, Miss, Miss just give us six questions. 
uh, uh, maksudnya membahas karakter juga karakter or karakteristik why does the author highlight specific character and characteristic karakter and karakteristik berarti karakteristik itu kan sifat-sifat produk yang yes. di highlight um, uh, ya yeah. kalau Kalau menurut aku why highlight tuh karena itu sih karena the starlight tuh want to persuade people gitu kan untuk yeah, uh, yeah, to buy her product or uh, their product. Uh, but, uh, aku gak, but I don't know how to apa ya why the starlight just uh, apa ya, hidden despite the the character or characteristic. Maybe uh, maybe they are afraid uh, maybe apa their product will not be sell or aku punya sedikit sinyal. Kalau misalnya ya perspektif aku, misalnya uh, Scarlet ini kan harganya uh, kalau di kantong pelajar tuh agak mahal karena 75 ribu kan. Kalau misalnya di uh, highlight itu kenapa di highlight? Karena dengan bahan-bahannya itu loh yang mengandung misalnya niacinamide, terus H, apa sih namanya tuh vitamin C yang kayak kayak gitu tuh karena Mereka lebih ngedepanin bahan-bahan produknya. Kalau misalnya yang di hidden tuh paling uh, tentang harganya. Makanya mereka banyak kan yang nurunin harga Scarlett di e-commerce tuh jadi 55000 ribu kayak gitu. Dan dari sana pasti uh, Scarlett tuh sendiri pasti mikirin lagi cara buat uh, mereka nggak kalah saingan sama reseller yang abal-abal kayak gitu loh. Makanya di hidden tuh... yang yang di hidden itu masalah price list dengan mengadakan mungkin mereka mengadakan promo atau bazar gitu dari officialnya gitu loh kalau yang misalnya di highlight itu paling karena bahan bahannya worth it untuk dibeli dan juga hasilnya itu loh mer kayak gitu sih mer aku make sense yeah, tadi yeah. <laughs> yeah. aku sorry ya aku nggak terlalu paham sih soalnya aku kurang apa ya aku kurang pakai yang kayak scarlet gitu jadi aku kurang paham sih guys Jadi ya, kalau menurut aku itu itu ya enak lah. Kalau menurut kalian gimana guys? Nih Dev, uh, Sarah sama Dito. How about your opinion? I think maybe we can focus on the on the advertisement. You know, like we don't need to uh, uh, worry whether you, uh, you 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 use the product or not. For example, like the. The, the advertisement that uh, Miss Gingin showed to us about a uh, Pons product, I think. I, I, but look at look at the advertisement. You know, like how uh, the advertisement, like what kind of, uh, I mean, like how they the characteristic of uh, how the characters of women of how the characters of women uh, of the the woman that presented in the uh, the advertisement. Okay. Why they always show, for example, like why they always show, uh, I mean, like a perfect uh, woman or beautiful with what, I mean, with great uh, uh, skin, something like that, standard, right? Yes, yeah. the standard of beauty. And then every everyone want to, I mean, like when I was a kid, I mean, like when I was a kid, I mean, like, I think it's it's all natural as a girl, right? When I look at the, the advertisement, the billboard, Uh, seeing the beauty, the, I mean, like uh, women's with beautiful face. I mean, like, oh wow, I want to be. I mean, I want to be like her, or something like that, right? So I want to be perfect, like like her, something like that. So, how do you? I mean, how do you feel about that? And what do you think about the character and the characteristics of? I mean, like, do you think that represents us? The the you know like the the you know us uh, in you know as in general, right? something like that or why not i mean like, why we we don't uh, see you know like a uh, male yeah uh, a man you know what about in in korea yeah even like oh, korea yes. <laughs> yeah so you can opa 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 yeah yeah go ahead so that miss that show the character Uh, yeah, Miss. Because yeah, yeah. Uh, the character yeah, yeah. characteristic, right? So, uh, why in Indonesia yeah. all the beauty product are you know always uh, represented by uh, women, right? What and then what happened in Korea? Yeah, I mean, I I've, I don't know much about Korea, 
but because I I watch advertisement on on, on TV, yeah. For example, like uh, WIB, WIB, uh, what is that? Uh, waktu Indonesia, Shopee, uh, Shopee. Shopee. <laughs> is it Shopee? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, they 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 hired a Korean uh, Korean uh, band, something like that. And then I I saw there. I mean, like even male. I mean, they're wearing lipstick, right? And then their skin, I mean, yes. it's, it's much, uh, it's a lot, yeah, yeah, it's better than, than mine, right? As, a, as yeah. a woman. So maybe you can talk about that. What about, I mean, like we have Dito here and we have Dev represents male uh, Indonesian uh, uh, men, right? So what do you think about that uh, advertisement, right? Do you, do you agree with that? I mean, like, is that what represents you as a man? Yeah, so there is so much discussion that you can you can you can have in this uh, group. Yeah, go ahead. But I need to go to back to the. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going All to right, give you another. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome. Yeah, bu uh, yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Says the check, so I was just checking. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, okay. So, if we uh, they're all done, I think we can go to main room. Yeah. Actually, uh, there are many topics that I need to cover, but I, I, I'm not sure whether it's okay. We well, it. Yeah, <laughs> at least they know. I mean, I mean, some of this, some of the, I mean, like, I think some of the groups there are still struggling to to have this conversation because you know this is something something new right Bu? yeah yeah although some yes. of them are very good yeah, Bu yeah some yeah. of them are very critical yes but yes. i i am i also familiar with some of them are struggling just like uh -huh. in my class yeah okay let me announce it uh, yeah okay So they're ready to represent their find uh, their discussions. So is everyone here, Masusi? Not yet. It's 24. Okay. Uh, we have 33. We still have uh, nine. Yeah, nine more students join. Okay, they're now here, Ibu. Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Thank you for working in your groups. I hope you engage in such as uh, in such a critical and insightful discussion uh, within your group. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so now how are we going to call them? Mususi, are we going to call representative of each group? Yes, we can. Okay. We have five five groups so maybe one group will share like five minutes the, the yeah. maximum right Bu? yeah just five minutes yeah okay so who'd like to share should i uh we are are we going to uh you know uh do in order everyone yes or not yes i agree miss okay so mm -hmm. maybe i will start from Group one, is it okay? So who will represent group one? And what is the text? Um, Kelly, do you want to speak? <laughs> yes, Rachel. Uh, I forgot our group name. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> we're, we're from group one, Cal. <laughs> oh, okay. Asal iya aja tadi. Um, yeah. Okay, um, so our group chose this Disney and we chose Pocahontas. So for the voice represented, represented it's mostly from Pocahontas' point of view in the movie. However, from the production itself, it's shutting the voice of the natives and it's glamorizing colonization. And in the story, it is shown that Pocahontas or the real person was named Matawaka. She was a child, maybe 10 to 15 years old. And John Smith is a real soldier from America who, who was involved in the colonization. He was 27 from the real story, but in real life, they were not involved. However, in the Disney movie, Disney sugarcoat a lot of things. And one of the most, um, uh, I would say a popular sugarcoating is the one in Pocahontas. So they obviously erase the native voice and what what is what it's really like to get colonized like how um, Americans like Christopher Columbus colonized the Native Americans it's not explicitly shown there it's like just something light it's just something that oh your enemies and that's about it so that's why when Pocahontas and John Smith was romantically involved a lot of kids and people this is the problem we think that um, malah di romantisize gitu, miss. It's not taken seriously. Rather than bullying, it's just seen as um, equal enemies where it's not equal. The power power dynamic is more shown that in the real history that the white people has more power over the natives. Well done, ya, yeah. Plus, uh, Kalista's group. Uh, that's a very uh, critical review and, and, and a critical discussion related to uh, specific questions to develop your critical mm -hmm. literacy. Did you talk about it? Uh, how, uh, uh, who are the members in your group, Kalista? Uh, it was me, Rachel, uh, Rati, Ajeng, and Salma Riva. Yeah, okay. Are they in from the same class, Bu Susi? Uh, they're not. I think uh, Ajeng is from uh, micro teaching class, and uh, May Salmarifa is from TAFL two class. And, and Kalista is from? Kalista is from literacy class. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. Uh, the most important thing is you talk about it uh, with the rest of the members of the group so that you can help each other. Yeah. To, to get to the same uh, level of understanding. But yeah. what you mentioned, Kalista, is very, very uh, highly critical. Okay. Yeah, I think they try. Very good, yeah. Uh, are you all familiar with Pocahontas, everyone in this group? Do you watch that um, movie? I've watched it, but I think some of us um, might yeah. have been. Yeah, I haven't I watched the movie, Miss, but uh, at first we chose uh, Nemo, eh, not Nemo, Coco and uh, Mulan, but uh, Kalista said that uh, I have uh, one interesting story that that movie, and then uh, she uh, told me and Rati about the story of the movie, so I think, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting to yeah, be discussed. Okay. Right, very good, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Bu. Susi, maybe yeah. you would like to... Yeah, I think I need to add, Rachel said uh, in the in the chat box, Bu, since the target audience is children, I think they try to brainwash the kid. Yes, the story that's right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's exactly what... Uh, but I'm not going to say more about it because I'm <laughs> sure we have more groups yeah. choosing okay. Disney story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, second group, the group two, please. Uh, is it going to be Disney? What about Indonesian folklore I think, coming first? Yeah, I think the group uh, Malin <laughs> group Malin group. <laughs> Malin Kundang I, I, group. Yeah, I remember some uh, a, a group uh, discussing about Malin Kundang, but I don't remember the, uh, which group is it. Ayo, come on. We want to hear from Malin you. group. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> That's our group, group five. Hey, okay, go ahead. Are you going to be the Wait. representative, Reni? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Uh, uh, the most characters that 
presented in the story is Malin and his mother because I actually uh, because I because we think the authors trying to emphasize the moral moral issues about don't be durhaka to your mother because you're gonna your uh, your mother gonna curse you to become a stone. <laughs> uh, so and then. Okay. So, but uh, and then um, we see uh, like the balance of the story, the gender. Like there is a mother also. Ma eh, uh, Malin as the presentative as the male and the mother and his wife Malin's wife as the presentative of female. Uh, and then we see the economic. Uh, ec economic perspective like um, someone as uh, like uh, in Malin's story kan um, Malin tuh in me kelas menengah ke bawah I don't know if it's if talk in English lower lower class economic yeah low socioeconomic class yeah. that's right yeah low lower social economic nah uh, we see that Malin doesn't um, mengakui his mom because he is already being rich in his perantauan and then like he is shy, uh, he is embraced to approve that is what his mom like lupa diri, kacang lupa kulit gitu. I think that's all. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll see. I think yeah. uh, because uh, I need to talk more about something else maybe yes. we can talk about we, we invite students who talk about uh, uh the ads the ads yeah that... yeah there is Ibu. uh okay. yeah someone please yeah desi go ahead desi. Guilty. <laughs> okay that's my group um well um we started to talk um about the beauty standards and all of it and i think that um related to the questions um whose voices are being silenced. And I think, um, I mean, when we talk about the beauty products uh, advertisement, um, there uh, the ads for beauty enhancing products, I think it seems to make, you know, the consumer, the buyers feel that their current attractiveness, the level of attract uh, attractiveness, uh, different from what they um, should ideally be. So this, um, related to the beauty standards. And so most, uh, and often um, we kind of uh, seem to compare uh, ourselves to the products images like, like the previous, um, what is it? Pictures that you've shown um, in the advertisements. So, um, and regarding to the voices, I think for, for many years now, I think, um, these beauty products, um, they tended to exclude a uh, woman of color. So, so um, if all of these women are, you know, struggling and including um, women who lives in, uh, who live in Indonesia, for example, um, kebanyakan dari kita mempunyai kulit yang sawo matang, ya kan? And if we are kept, you know, struggling to find products and beauty, you know, um, beauty uh, products, um, I think um, the beauty industry or, uh, or retailers and marketers, they're, they're keep failing uh, them or us um, as, um, as, as um, yang mempunyai kulit yang memang berbeda dari um, the advertisement. So those, um, those, those including um, women who against it and most beauty, uh, I would say journalism, they still assume, or most beauty um, marketers, they still uh, assume that the audience, the buyer, the consumer are white. So, so I think that the, custom, uh, the cosmetic brands, for example, um, like what you sewn, um, puns, <laughs> they're, they're uh, making an effort in their marketing maybe. Um, but but um, in, uh, in the reality, the most, um, um, the, the consumer there, they're not only white, but, but it's also featuring um, 
a black a woman of color in the camp um in 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 um in the in the cost uh the consumer so, but um, what we can see here in the advertisement, they still uh, keep constantly featuring white women in their campaigns. And thus, they also maybe assume that their audience also white, probably. So um, that's the uh, thing that I want to um, explain, uh, share with you my uh, opinions. And I think they're also um, media literacy uh, helps a woman, you know, to to read the illusions of the ad advertisement here. So that's the important um, uh, and the vital role of the media literacy come into play when we have to kind of, you know, um, think again and think critically towards something. So that's what I'm. Um, what I've got in my mind. So thank you. Maybe others can um, also add more. Yeah, well done, uh, Desi and uh, members of your group. Yeah, thank you very much for presenting your point of view. Uh, that's also very highly critical. Yeah, of what you said earlier. Uh, look, I'm I'm very sorry. We have a very limited time. Yeah, I really want to know. Maybe you can uh, tell Bususi your responses, yeah, because I'm yeah. interested to know. Maybe Bususi, can you ask them to write down their responses? Maybe just okay. a short one. Okay. And I would like to read it later, yes. yeah, when when we meet, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, very good. Yeah, that's uh, highly critical. Look, uh, talking about beauty products, uh, I used to uh, visit Japan uh, uh, lots of times, yeah, uh, long long time ago. Uh, and I stayed there not a week or two, but quite uh, some months. Yeah, so I, I went to local uh, drugstore, I went to local supermarket, and believe me, even in Japan, whitening products are very dominant. I I just couldn't stop wondering why do they need whitening product, and it's quite dominant. Yeah, if you, I'm sure maybe one of you uh, went there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I stay there as a local, so yeah, I went to a local drugstore, not the tourist one, but maybe even in, in, in tourist uh, supermarket is maybe even crazier, yeah? But even in local supermarket, in local drugstore, uh, it's very dominant, yeah? So it's not only here, even in Japan, that's just crazy, yeah? So that's, um, yeah, media literacy is also plays an important part. Uh, look, because you talk, because we uh, talk about critical literacy, and I said earlier, critical literacy is a way of thinking, a way of life. That's why once you get to know the foundation of critical literacy, please implement that in other aspects of your life. When you are using media, for example, so you, you are more uh, critical. Okay. Uh, anyway, I think I need to uh, maybe not explain because only five minutes, 10 minutes, and I want to talk more with you actually. Yeah. Um, mm -mm. All right, all right. Uh, this is another uh, question that you need to practice. Yeah, uh, another question is: Do I need to consult another source of information? Look here. Miliki kulit cantik cerah dalam satu minggu. Do you do you think you need to consult another source of information? What and what way? I think Bu Susi can uh, talk about this in the class later on. But I really want to know what the science says about human skins. Okay, please uh, read source of information that are highly valid, highly reliable. What does uh, dermatologists, what do dermatologists say about human skin? Is it possible even to have it in one week? What do they say? What do the scientists say? Okay, this is the, what the ads say, okay? But we want to be critical. So I want you to look at the dermatologist point of view, okay? the science, and so on and so forth. And also next, anxiety disorder is higher for women than men. What kind of sources do you need to consult here? What do you think the sources that needs to be consulted here? Do you think this is a valid statistics? Is it valid? Do you need to, do you need to, uh, uh, compare with another article, for example? Do you need to compare with another facts? You don't have to answer now, but you need to think about it. Jakarta will sing in 10 years. We heard about it, yeah? 
and what kind of source of information do you need to consult? Okay, when people say Jakarta will sink in 10 years, maybe you would like to hear what the environmentalists say. Okay, uh, maybe you want to hear um, what, what point of view do you think you need to include to help you clarify with this uh, bombastic? These are all very bombastic, yeah. But as a critical literate, critically literate uh, student, critically literate person, these not these are not supposed to influence uh, our way of thinking just like that. Yeah, we need to have those foundation and layers. We talk about this. Actually, we want to. I want to talk about this, but we only have like uh, six minutes yeah it's also a practice for you to uh, question to practice is the author's intention you really need to have a valid check on each of the author yeah you check what is the author's intention what do you know about the author on the creator advertisement company and so on and so forth do you know the mission and vision of the university do you know how far do you know about your own university? You are a big fan of this person, Terelier. Do you know his education background? Do you know his expertise? Do you know his qualifications? Do you even know his real name? Yeah, that's very important. Uh, Squid Game. Do you know the values behind the movie? If you watch it only for pleasure, you might miss the values. Okay, you might miss the values. This is something for you to look to examine, to question, mempertanyakan, yeah. That's why you have to look deeply. What do the script writers want you to believe? I wrote this in italics. Yeah, want you to believe. What do they want you to believe about a woman playing in that dangerous game who's willing to do anything? I forgot her name. <laughs> I forgot the name of, of a long-haired woman who's, you know, willing to do anything, yeah. What are the values presented there? What about the values of this? Uh, Bu Susi, did you watch Squid Game? Not yet, Ibu. Sorry, did you watch it? Not yet. Oh, not yet. Uh, look, actually, I want to talk more, yeah? Because I cried in this episode. <laughs> what, what are the values uh, represented by an immigrant in South Korea? Yeah, Ali, Ali is uh, an immigrant, yeah? If you are watching Squid Game. What is the values presented by the industry? You know, the big, the giant filming industry. How do they capture? How do they create an image of an immigrant? You know, helpless, um, yeah. uh, you know, being betrayed by the majority. Yeah, kan? Ali was betrayed. And that's when I cried. <laughs> <laughs> but actually anyway uh, uh, these are you cannot you cannot uh, you cannot understand the values if you just you know watch it and you know without questioning or examining this i think i have enough talking with you i want to talk more but i want to know uh, your comments yeah we have uh, five more minutes Buzuzi, can we ask for their yeah, comments sure sure Ibu. Yeah, this we have come to the end of our session. Uh, sorry if I talk too much, but I want to know now. I want to hear from you guys, please. Your overall. Okay, maybe someone who keep silent since the beginning. Would you like to say something? So what we are uh, discussing now, is it useful for you? Is it easy for you to understand or is it difficult? Is it interesting? Yeah, just say whatever you want to say. I, I want to hear from you before we end our session. Yeah. Hello, Diva. Yeah, we have one. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have Diva and Rachel. Uh, yes, go ahead, please. Um, who should talk first? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Deepa. You okay. can go first. Okay, thank you. So, um, from what I got uh, from this um, lesson is, I actually really enjoy, um, enjoy it because uh, Miss Ginkin been talking about a lot of um, 
things that are pretty popular and uh, I can relate and understand well, since you related to um, the trends, especially with the, the movies related and then the activities you give, it's really, uh, how do I say it? Um, from the earlier, when we did the breakout room, it's actually pretty fun that we discuss things that we were, we didn't really realize before. Like for example, my group was talking about um, whitening beauty product and through the discussion, I realized something that I wasn't really thinking before. And then when you talk about the squid game thing, and then there's a lot of values uh, within it. It's, it's a really popular uh, movie, right, series. And everyone was talking about it and then talking about um, how it's really cool during Halloween, but you related to the linguistic and the value of it. So it like opens up a new door in my head. So it's really interesting for me, the session. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Hey, thank you very much, Diva. We have Rachel, please. Um, yeah, I think the session is um, very interesting and how um, I think these days or you know, nowadays we are encouraged to be like a detective because <laughs> kind of like like um, Sherlock Holmes or Conan because like we have to um, look deeper into something uh, into um, the news or the information that we consume every day and um, also uh, from our from my discussion earlier my group's discussion um, I found out that turns out um, Kalista and I we both um, really liked uh, Pocahontas and we, we love talking about the controversial um, history behind um, Disney's um, princess movies and so yeah that's why I think today's session um, has been very um, great for me and yeah, it has been a fruitful discussion. So thank you, Miss, for sharing your knowledge also. Yeah, thank you very much, Rachel. And thank you very much to everyone. I'm sure Bususi will follow up a very interesting discussion later in your classes, yeah? And thank we you. can talk about it uh, later because, uh, you know, I, I really can't wait to see and hear your responses, okay? All right, uh, Bususi, I give yeah. the session back to you. Okay, thank you, Ibu Gingin. Okay, let's uh, maybe we can uh, give applause to Ibu Gingin, or you can say thank you. Just unmute your audio if you like to. Yes. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank, thank you very Zingin. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor thank to you. have you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much yeah. for inviting me. So now I get to know you and I really want to know you better later on. Yeah, yeah it's very interesting. Some of you have been very critical and some of you, please be patient with yourself. Yeah, just uh, slow down with this process because as I said earlier, this is a lifelong learning. It won't change in one week. It won't change in one night. Yeah, yeah. so just yeah. Be, be, be kind to yourself and be, be uh, easy on yourself. Yeah, yes. but you need to practice. That's uh, the mm -hmm. important part. Okay. Yeah. All right. So thank you again, Bugin Gin. So I think, um, yeah, my takeaways uh, from this sessions, I hope that you... For me, it's like, uh, you know, being an English teacher is not like a boring profession, right? Uh, yeah, because right. we don't focus more on grammar or, you know, like, of course, grammar is important, but we can, uh, you know, take our students to uh, a more engaging, <laughs> yeah, more engaging and more meaningful, uh, you know, um activities and then close to their uh, life and then this title the title of our session today is critical literacy uh, embedding critical critical literacy in everyday life so i hope we can still practice this and um like ginkin mentioned that uh, miss ginkin sorry Bu, uh, because uh, we call the, the lectures with Miss Ginkin. So sometimes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Ginkin mentioned that, you know, uh, 
we, we need process, yeah, to be a critical uh, reader and re uh, to be critical in literacy. This is critical literacy. This is, this is one of the, uh, you know, literacy that we are, uh, we're focusing on as a 21st century learners and 21st century uh, teachers. Okay, thank you so much. And maybe we can have the, uh, what is it? uh the written uh, response yeah okay Ms. Gin, Gin. yeah okay yeah that would be great okay, so yeah, i will okay. i will send it to Ibu Gin thank Gin. you very much okay thank once again you. everyone uh, uh hope you have a good weekend whatever you are at the moment and stay healthy and thank you Bu Susi. so thank this you. is the end of our talk so we can yeah. leave now yes okay yes. all right thank bye. you so much bye bye, bye Ms. Yeah. thank you miss Gin, Gin and miss Susi. Bye. 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 bye okay <laughs> Have a nice thank weekend. You, okay, thank have you, a nice weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. C. <laughs> I can't and sleep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Can we take a picture? <laughs> oh, I think. Oh, gone. yeah. You should have. Yeah, we should have him taken a picture with Miss Gingin. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's late. Okay, bye bye. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you, Miss. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye, everyone. Okay, bye. Thank you, everyone.